from the AK Mindset and I'm here today with uh, not my usual guest but someone new. Do you want to introduce yourself from the people please? What's up? I'm Shax. Just a fellow Mangaree here. Yes and today we're here to discuss Kakaishi, the series that Shax put me on kindly after we did uh, a little deal. <laughs> oh yeah! Hey man, that came out beneficial for both of us man. Yes. It was, it was, it was actually quite good. Even though when I first saw the episode count, I was f thinking, how am I even gonna, how am I gonna do this? I was like 52 episodes. <laughs> Don't know if I have that in me, but, but no, nah, it went, it went by quite quickly. I'm not gonna lie. Especially in this day and age, man, the age we are, 52 episodes. That's a, that's a commitment, man. <laughs> facts facts you know we don't have that we don't be having free time like that anymore so but yeah kakashi i thought i just finished reading the manga and i was like hmm before before i forget everything that happened in the story let me just talk about it with the guy who put me on so yeah it's just gonna be a little short discussion so I just want to ask you, Shax, how did you discover Kakashi? Because you were the one who introduced me to the series. So, what? How did you find it? Uh, this, it's actually like the first manga I ever picked up and read. I, I was in like my school library, I think, and I was just looking for something to read, and I just liked the look of the art. I just picked it up. I didn't even like look inside of it. I just looked at the cover, picked it up, and it was the volume where. Remember when uh, Maduro was fighting Kyo, I want to say his name is? Okoya. And Yakoya, that's what it was. And oh, okay. he had the bead necklace. That was mm. the volume. And I remember reading it, looking at the dogs and just the, the power systems, thinking it was so unique and everything. And it, it kind of what got me into reading other manga, honestly. I see, I see. Yeah, that's one thing I have to say about Kakashi, which makes it stand out from the rest of these other series that I've read. The power system is very distinct and mm -hmm. i like i like the whole i guess magic i don't even know if you can call it magic but the magic that they're using especially with the, Kaka the kakaishi and then you have the part ayakashi and the other special power beings as well but i feel like how they handled the power system in the series was, was they, they handled it well but like <laughs> yeah especially the way like how they expanded on it because like it started off as just like something to capture demons and then mm. as as we're like going through the series and learning more we realize like they have the power to manipulate like space and realities in an area and then they they sort of tied together because like it was very early on when we see a yoshi like restoring a magical site yeah. and so like they kind of just tied the power into like creating the castle up and they like just tie it all together really well that's true that's true the way they it never felt far-fetched when they kept introducing more levels to the mm -hmm. to the power progression especially like you've gone from as you were saying capturing to now creating a whole new world so just seeing that yeah. small progression as the series went on was it was interesting because I wasn't sure how they would keep us, I guess, engaged with the story when we were just going to be focused on this, this same site. And I guess so, this is a good chance for me to explain what the series is about. So it follows two, our two protagonists, Yoshimori and Tokine. They're from two families, which are branch families from the original founder. I think his name is what's it tokiko no that, that's not his name but basically there's this guy he was hired by a king to protect the princess from these demons called ayakashi and he does this by using his kakaishi powers and he was unable to what he did is he sealed the site so and the site attracts more demons so what the people from these branch families have to do they have to protect the site which is the karasamori site 
and they've been doing this for like over 400 years and we get to our to the, to the present day which is following Yoshimori and Tokina who are the current heirs and we know that they're heirs because they get a special mark was called the Hoenn mark and that's really sets up the premise of the story we kind of see them throughout their day-to-day -day lives how they handle balancing their kakaishi duties with their everyday lives because at night every night they have to be battling ayakashi just the two of them they don't really get any help from outside sources especially in the beginning so yeah that's the that's the premise of the story if you're looking to get into it before we start spoiling you but i wanted to ask next um what are your general thoughts on kakashi as a manga series as a whole i feel like for its genre it it handles the whole shonen thing really well like it's i feel like it's also like a great starter series like if you're maybe thinking about checking out manga i, I feel like kishi's like a perfect place to start uh i don't feel like it's too complicated i feel like it like eases the reader in pretty easily and i feel like it it does a good job of keeping the story fresh like the pace is well done and you never feel like things are getting stale the stakes are always getting higher and the development of the characters and the story it's always like pacing itself really nicely so hmm. yeah i think i'd agree with that because especially with the characters the characters are a very strong point of kakashi i feel there wasn't mm -hmm. really any characters that i really disliked if i'm thinking back maybe there's someone but if i don't remember them i think it's more due to them not being memorable than me disliking them maybe i think probably ichiro ichiro ogi i didn't like him he was I, that's exactly who i was thinking of too and yeah. like the thing is I, I really didn't like him only because of like the characters actions and motivations it's not even like a problem with the writing it's just when you hate a villain because they're the bad guy type of deal yeah yeah he's he's a he's a scumbag honestly and most of the most of the things in the story were because because of him so that makes him even worse in my book but yeah the characters in kakaishi are very strong the way the story moves from one point to the other and it kind of ties into this one central point and following our protagonist the protagonists are quite interesting the whole families like the sumimura family and the yukimura family i like the what's it the dispute between those two even though mm -hmm. i don't think we found out what why they were beefing like at the end i don't remember finding uh, a distinct reading i think it was yeah you know we did we did so remember when uh tokimori the founder was discussing the history oh yeah he said right, that right. They, they would like beef they, they would like uh fight each other to like what, what was it it was a reason they were fighting each other. it was uh to like stay on top so they were like competing with each other to see who was the yeah, best yeah, you're right actually you're so right. sometimes like yeah, sometimes it got deep and they actually like were killing each other off yeah yeah you're definitely right i just forgot yeah. so that's yeah. that's that's the reason why i i like that reason but i would have i would have liked to see that be focused on a bit more i would have thought we'd have an arc where it was like sumi mirror versus yuki mirror but in the I think it would have it was it should have been more personal you know what i mean mm, definitely because that grudge is from back in the day but i didn't see anything from in the present time that really have caused the grandparents to dislike each other as much as they did especially when when we go back to the their, like their flashbacks they were getting along relatively well so i, I don't understand what shifted the dynamic in their relationship the only thing i can think of is with um what's his name tokine's father and yoshimori's yeah. mother i think maybe that event probably caused a rift to form in their relationship because of what went down but that wasn't even his mom's fault so i don't know i i always thought like it, it could have just been that's a good point it could have also been because of like tokyo's father and yoshi's mm. mom but i feel like it could have also just been like the the competitive nature of the clans like they, they've been doing it for hundreds of years i feel like it's just in their nature now to just beef with each other like sure they got along when they were young and they were new and everything but once they're kids and they're they, the 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 legitimate air was passed on i feel like maybe their competitive natures kicked in 
and they started like feuding or something because it, it was never implied that the feud between the mo like the, the families now in this day and age was anything more than like a friendly rivalry like it was always it was a gag right they would throw slippers at each other she would hose them down it was never anything <laughs> serious because when it came down to it they, they would all work together right yeah that's true that's true i love those moments the best honestly whenever like the grandparents are helping out yeah that's when you knew it was a like, proper serious moment i think yeah the was the cubic formation that was that was that, that moment was oh, yeah. that was lit can't lie just yeah. the combination of all the four airs working together to form a massive kakai after yeah and it's, and it's like in the in the second half of the series i feel like uh tokini's grandma tokiko she got so much more shine like we, we had so many more panels with her and we got to see like what she was thinking and everything like from the point of view of like the predecessor like i thought that was so far i love the tokyo chapters man she's a great character yes she is and speaking of great characters i think that's a good segue to go into our favorite characters i want to give you i want i want you to give me your top three or maybe top five whichever you feel like you can do i can do a five i can do five okay okay that'll make it easier <laughs> <laughs> uh let me think okay so Matsumori has to be at the top spot. I feel like it's so hard. Like they make him so likable. It's so hard not to include him in the top five. Like there were so many moments where the reader has, like the, uh, the author has, he's like guessing, like, is he one of us? Is he like maybe, you know, Fox. headed towards the dark side? Like you would see panels of him smiling, looking cold. So then you'll see a panel where his entire face is shaded black. And he has like this vindication on his face. Like he's so determined to carry out his goals. And he was such a like, he was such a well-written character because like he had like this one side of him that was just like holding on like like just carrying all this weight from like being the eldest brother to like looking after the entire uh task force to trying to maintain balance with the the other 12 i forgot what the what was the group called but the 12 the council people. of 12 the council Something of like 12 yes yeah, like dealing with that and like then you find out on the other side he has like this animosity built up towards his brother and they explored that a little bit because like almost every <laughs> i kind of feel bad for Vaz because man, if you take it like everyone he came up against like every villain he came up against mentioned like hey i bet you wish you were your bro though <laughs> like everyone <laughs> mentioned that to him yo i feel like he's been dealing with that his whole life and so i like that they really like gave him that role of like the person who wanted to be the successor and looks like he's more capable to handle the role but wasn't given it like I, I, that was a great angle to go after uh let me think number two i'd probably have to give it to although he wasn't in the series for that long when you look at it as a whole i gotta give it again yes, i feel like he wasn't again. with us yeah facts he wasn't with us for a long time but the time we spent with him man it was some great character development and gone too soon man I, i'm really hurt that he went through with it but also glad like we didn't get some because i felt like it would have been a little bit cheap to like make us grieve for this character and then just bring him back yeah, out of nowhere you know what i mean I'm, I'm glad that he he committed to it um or she i don't i don't really know who wrote this but uh again third i'd probably i'm gonna disclude i'm gonna exclude uh yoshimori from this list and tokene just because it's too easy they'll they'll take up like two spots right there so i'll give third spot to sen i feel like he was a great replacement for yeah for gen because he didn't even feel like a replacement he felt like his own character that he didn't like do the same thing twice like they mentioned the similarities between the characters and their personalities but they had very different struggles and one thing i'm a little disappointed was you know this whole plot point where sen's mentor the guy who betrayed amasamori and the family like mm -hmm. remember how he was teaching him to like hone tr practice his like mind reading on the low i kind of thought that god i feel like he, he, they tossed that story out the window because they were definitely leading to send possibly defecting you know what i mean getting caught up in some mm -hmm. and, and getting in some trouble because he wasn't supposed to be learning that he was doing that behind everyone's back so I, I was surprised it was dropped so quickly like the guy said yeah i don't want to i'm not gonna betray matt more he's scary and then it was just dropped i'm like wow okay so he really punked out like he's not gonna do it anymore uh, so i was surprised there but i enjoyed uh 
the moments we got with Sen a lot. I like the relationship between not even just him, but like his boys too that were like helping out the Kikeshi and I, I, I really enjoyed the character development there. Um, he was always looking out for Yoshi too, man. Like the real big, bro, you know what I mean? Trust me. He was he was spying on him, but he was always helping him out. Like he was his he was his guy for real. Uh, fourth. I'll give fourth to Tokiko. I really like the role she played as the as the like mentor to Tokine and just even to Yoshimori at times. Like the moments we got with Yoshimori and Tokiko felt special because very rarely do we get to see members of the clan's family like interacting with each other if mm. it's not the two Kikeshi. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I enjoyed that part. Uh number five. Let me think about this one. Uh, uh Oh, I gotta give it to my boy. What's his name? Shichiro Ogi? Is that yes. his name? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, That's I it. gotta eight. give him some love, man. What a great character. Oh man, he really shined in the in the last act of the series, and his ability was so cool. Like that guy was just level-headed, got all the girls. Was a bit of an anti-hero. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah that's a good yeah. top five. I'm not gonna lie. Since you decided to exclude Tokine and Yoshimori, I'm gonna do the same. But our lists are probably gonna end up being quite similar. Yeah. But <laughs> let me go. Let me, I'm not gonna rank them, but similar to you, Masamori top at number one because just as you were saying, the struggle that we see throughout the series, the balance between dark and light, there were so many times where you're thinking, is this guy still on our side I, I actually thought at one point i think it was during the mr mudo arc i thought mm -hmm. uh, yoshimori and masamura they're gonna actually scrap because oh uh, yeah when he was like he he said okay yeah um i think mudo gave him a choice your brother's life or your life and he was like take my brother's life and i was like wow okay so i was shook <laughs> but he was capping and i was like i can't I, you can't you can never get a clear read on masamori's intention and he has mm -hmm. so much responsibility on his shoulders and he's balancing so many different things so seeing that internal struggle throughout the series and then one thing the author always does him dirty when it's his time to get the kill and he always gets the kill stolen i, I found that quite funny because uh, um, it's true yeah. With Ichiro, um, Shinichiro killed him before, and then with the supreme leader, the was, the brother came and killed him off before Masamori got to him as well. So, yeah, just that emphasis that yeah, he's really not the chosen one. That was, it was funny, but it was kind of cool for the author to keep holding him like that. But yeah, Masamori is a great character, really well developed and. He kind of goes through a little bit of growth throughout the series as well so i like him and then again as you said gone too soon i when he died i actually couldn't even believe it especially in the anime because i was like wait he's he's dead and then it really <laughs> it hurt me it hurt me because when you go to the funeral with his sister and he's like he was just 14 i was like oh he's so young and they really killed him because I didn't think the series was going to be killing people. I don't know why I was surprised by that, but because I, I, did, I didn't get that vibe from the series that they, we'd be killing characters. And again, he was in the opening. I was, I was thinking he's finally here. I didn't think he'd be killed off so quickly. But for the time he was here, he was a good bro to Yoshimori. I enjoyed seeing their relationship develop, kind of how he was bashful and then he started to open up and then his dynamic with Atora as well how she was a mother to him that's another reason why his death hurt so much seeing her screaming crying at the funeral that was another sad moment mm -hmm. and he had his it, powers oh he was so nice it, that's oh. what hurt was because the man fully transformed and realized he was actually still accepted by his friends and then the died I'm like ah oh, that's fucked up that's fucked up. As soon as he, the man felt a little bit of like self love and realized that, hey man, it's cool. People can still accept me even though I'm, I'm half demon. And then he just got, oh man, that was nasty. Nah, Kagoro has blood on his hands. 
I can't I can't believe he did that to him. We were about to finish finish this gagging guy. He just came through and slashed him. Oh, uh, oh man. Yeah, that Is was it, you know I'm not gonna lie, isn't it crazy how like small the Kokuboro arc is compared to the rest of the series like because when i was a kid it felt like the whole series was about them then <laughs> because i completely forgot the manga right so it's, it's kind of insane that like because i feel like the premise was so good you have this like castle like demons trying to take over the sacred land that they're trying to protect and then they, he kind of just wrapped up the storyline and never touched it again it's kind of i'm not saying it was bad I'm, I'm glad that we moved on to like other enemies and he kept it fresh but pretty surprising in terms of like shonen like usually that it's like situations where the enemy is like a group of villains it's it's usually revisited in some way you're right actually because i think it was the woman who turns into puppets we see her walk off and she turned one of the like people on the council into her puppets the a thousand eyes guy but we i do not remember seeing that lady again so yeah, yeah they, she, she just she just wrapped it up yeah, uh, just he just wrapped it up like that. I think the that arc was very strong, but I guess he just couldn't tie it back again. I guess it was more to introduce the theme of these leaders of their own that create their own world. But yeah, uh-huh. maybe that's a miss. But yeah, again, great character, gone too soon. I wish I kind of wish he was still alive, but his death made the series better in some aspects seeing the characters deal with the grief was good and then yeah and then sen again i really enjoyed sen's characters because of his role in yoshimori's i guess growth how he gave so many pep talks to yoshimori he's a lot more intelligent emotionally and mentally and he helps to give a more direct or realistic angle because yoshimori is quite idealistic overly positive so i liked how he kind of balanced out yoshimori's antics at times and i think there was this one point and this i don't know what arc it was but he was just like you just need to ask people for help because yoshimori's like oh why do i keep messing up and he's like you need to ask people for help still trying to do stuff on your own and he he kind of tussles his hair and i was like yeah your son is that's that's a big bro Sen. that's when i had to start calling a big bro great panel man <laughs> yep they're the same age but he's so much more mature than him i love Sen. he's a one of my favorite characters for sure and then samiko she wasn't in the series for long but uh they did her dirt. they did her wrong man they didn't they didn't let her be with the family she she made that ultimate sacrifice for the for the team and she was she was she was just trying to find a way to make her family happy that's why she did all this that's why she committed 10 years of her life just to roaming around finding ways to steal this karasomi karasomori site all because of what yoshimori told her when he was younger and that hurt it hurt me when she went inside the shinkai and she stealed it off it just it, it just didn't feel fair for her to have to stay inside after she's been away from the family for so long like it, should, it didn't feel like she got any reward for the hard work she got it she put in a bit of a tragic character i'm not gonna lie and yeah i feel like master Mori definitely takes after her in that regard like because mm. yoshimori's like just like his dad in terms of like so helpful always trying to like look after people and everything you ever notice every time yoshimori's friends come over pops is like yo you guys staying for dinner like yeah, you guys want to spot sleep pops is great man i love pops him, him and the grandpa too man i love the grandpa especially when he got serious like it, i feel like he was a maybe maybe uh it was the same amount and it just doesn't register as much because you're not hearing it when you're reading it but i feel like he was definitely like more of a gag character in the show because in the manga he had just so many serious moments where he was just like telling yoshi like hey man like the, the job you like you're you're getting ready for it's, it's no joke you gotta like suit up for this yeah i agree with you i agree with you in the, in the anime he had a lot more gag moments but there was one there was this one episode when yoshimori was sick and then he he's supposed to be helping tokine but he doesn't actually help her because he's, he was you kind of see him go serious and he's he's like 
but I need to see if you can actually take care of Karasum Karasumori's site by yourself you, that you're not just relying on Yoshimori and I like that episode because it showed how even though they've got this competitive nature he's still trying to he was willing to step in if it got too much for Tokine but he wanted to see if she was able to do it by herself so I like yeah. that kind of calculating view he had yeah the moments the moments the heirs have with the other pair the other person's like gramps grandparents is just it's always dope man the dynamics in the show are just fire in general you know who should get a shout though like character wise what's my boy's name at the i forgot number three he doesn't even have a name number three shout out to number three man oh soji yeah man my guy, shout soji. Out to soji, yeah man. soji he dope man was, I loved seeing yeah, him. Man. Yeah, you'll be my number five. I was gonna say, uh, um, who did you have on number five again? I had uh, she, uh, she, Shinchi, Shinchi, Shinchi Oh, the, the, the Grim Reaper. Yeah, I was gonna say him, but now Soji, I really enjoyed how he went from this robotic, stoic, didn't really know much about the world, to opening up and developing emotionally, understanding that he can take his own decisions. And making his own choices questioning his choices and beginning to take those first steps in his actual life through yoshimori's yeah. influence i think he he was kind of another replacement for gen but yeah. he he did his job well i liked his relationship with yoshimori where yoshi was kind of like a mentor figure for him and he and it, the work he put in, it paid off because we see at the end of the series, he, we see him expressing emotion and I was really surprised to see that. And I was happy to see it too because it shows that it wasn't it wasn't too late for him to start changing. Yeah, man, that, that moment with the mechanical pencil was so wholesome, bro. Oh. Like, that, that was so sad on the low. I feel like that's how you replace a main character and like, have it still be like a good dynamic because there was like a lot of mystery involved in it at first like remember when they ran into mm -hmm. each other when he was uh fixing up the the site because of that that lord with the, the umbrella that was like tweaking out yeah, <laughs> with the blood raining yeah, blood and everything creepy. that was probably one of the best demons in the series by the way but when when they were uh, up against that thing and so we first see soji like attack yoshimori like it started off with intrigue we're like who is this guy and then it's like worked his way into the group uh, you know what? like it reminds me of uh remember when sasuke got replaced with sai and like yeah. everyone hated it everyone was like who is this new this is awful like you just brought him out of nowhere trying to like force him into the mix you gotta like transition it well man and they used the plot to do it as well it was, it was a good it was a good way of replacing get without really replacing him mm. yeah i agree with yeah. that i agree with that soji was definitely a great replacement for gen because he w he wasn't a, a carbon copy of gen he was his own character with his own nuances so it didn't really feel like he was just put there because we need another gen no he was he was soji he was number three there was more mysteries to him more things yeah. for the reader to get um interested by no wasted characters really in this show Facts, I'm serious. characters are definitely a strong point for this series but another point I wanted to touch upon is your favorite arc slash moments. Any moments in the series where, you, where it's just stuck in your memory. You're just like, yeah, when I think about Kakashi, like, this moment always comes to my mind. Uh, I'll give two. The, the obvious answer for me is the Kokuboru arc because it's it's the strongest in my memory I, I watched the anime so many times as a kid so like that arc definitely is like it's, it's a special arc to me i'm not gonna lie to you and i like the characters it was the introduction of zekai that we got mm. i felt like the anime handled that well i feel like the, uh, zekai loki looks better in the, in the series because it's like it has this weird like texture effect on it so it looked it looked it looks like otherworldly almost um and the second one would probably have to be it's one of the later the the second half of the series is like strong man it's really good i'd have to say it's the arc where we see we where yoshi leaves with his mother and he's training with like tokimori because there's so many satisfying payoffs in that arc like 
so many things revealed, like so many lore, so much lore that we got. I, I really enjoyed that arc. Yeah. I think it was 32, maybe. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think the Coco Ball arc in the anime was really good. And to be honest, the anime as a whole is really, really good, I have to say. But especially your Coco Ball arc. That's where, that's where you kind of leave the, because the beginning of the series, I will say, is a tad slow. But once you're on the Coco Ball stuff, it, you're kind of wishing that we go back to the slow stuff because of how intense we, yeah. we get with all these invasions. I was just, I was thinking, why, how, because you get so many of these Ayakashi coming and I'm just like, it's just Yoshimori and Tokina. It's not even fair for them to be fighting all these people, but they always manage to, I'll be thinking, how are they going to get the job done but they always get it done and that's one thing i appreciate from the writing of the series because of how inventive they were with their powers how to get out of the situations like manipulating the size and shape of their kekais or using their kekais as um footholds to jump into the air and stuff like that i, I that's one thing i enjoyed especially about the Koku Boro arc, because I think that's when you saw them become more diverse in their uses of their Kekais. But, yeah. So, what were you going to say? Yeah, no, no, no. That's, I, I was just agreeing with it. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Um, so, I, I say for Ox, um, I guess Koku Boro, and then my second Ox, from the later half of the series, is the Tokine arc. I think it's Guillotine Island, where she's brought there to be uh what's it interrogated because she killed my guy with the umbrella i really enjoyed that arc because normally the the manga especially is quite heavily focused on yoshimori and tokine mm -hmm. can be put to the side at times so to have a tokine focused arc with her being the main topic of the conversation seeing her thoughts seeing her go through these trials and tribulations i found that quite entertaining because i like her character and i feel like she should have got some she should be getting this focus already in the series so i liked and i also like the character that was introduced um i think his name is yugami i thought he was a dope character i liked i liked his power as well with the blood and then mm -hmm. the the culmination at the end when they're fighting Yashiro and then Yoshimori, I think that's one of his coldest entrances. When he, I think they were fighting the what's it, the Scythe Lady, and he was like, "Oh yeah, yeah I told yeah, you yeah. if you if you hurt her, you're gonna pay something like that." But yeah, that that was a that was a good arc. I like the arc a lot. The the series is really really good at introducing new characters, man. Yeah, that's that's true. That's definitely true. Like even was it the, in the Council of Twelve when they revealed that the lady was this thunder dragon? Oh my days! That oh, was man. cold. Yeah, no, the series is it's top five in my books, man. It's one of those ones where you can always go back to it, and even though that it might not be the most excellently written or it might not have the best animated moments, you know it will hold us. A special place because of the emotions you felt when you were reading it and just you can remember where you were when you were reading it as well it's definitely a forgotten gem i'd say that's a fact because i don't even think it was showing over here when uh, i was younger anyway or maybe i missed it because i don't i definitely don't remember seeing it on the TV channels like Jetix and then and Tsunami. I don't remember seeing it. Oh, yeah, no. I, I've never seen it on TV either. <laughs> like, I picked the manga and then a couple, like, a couple years later, a friend of mine in my class was like, yeah, you know, there's like an anime for this, right? And I was like, whoa, checked it out. And I was like, holy shit. I'm, I'm mad that, like, I th it's messed up because I feel like the series definitely would have had a bigger impact if the entire show was like, the entire manga was adapted. I agree, but I don't even understand why they they stopped though, because the anime was good. The anime was really good, and they the changes that they were making, in my opinion, makes the the first half of the series. I would rather watch the anime than read the manga. 
because of some of the changes they made although sometimes they were remixing parts and i was thinking you shouldn't have remixed that but like, was it popular part- enough mm, i think i think maybe I, it came out mid 2000s so that's probably the height of like bleach and naruto so it makes sense why it was getting overlooked but it's a shame i'm not gonna lie uh, probably an issue with with budget that's true that's not, that's probably more than likely it probably didn't it, you're probably, yeah. it probably didn't sell as well as they wanted it to and 52 episodes is is quite a lot as well so hopefully we'll get like a like an inuyasha the final act type thing like they'll bring it back one day because <laughs> hey, i because I, 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 i'm reading right now apparently this the manga did great like the, and the anime readings apparently were, were good too oh okay hopefully. we can hope then okay okay so as we're coming to the close i think the last question i want to ask you is why you would recommend kakashi if you're trying to if you were trying to sell it to someone who who hasn't watched it before if you've never seen the series before honestly i would say that the series at its high points could be compared to like the greats like naruto and one piece and bleach almost because like the story i feel like while it might not be like you said like the best piece of writing ever i feel like it's a great it's a great ride man it's enjoyable the plot progresses nicely as you said the characters are a strong point if you're looking for a good story you'll find it with kikishi mm. just to echo shaks's point i feel like kakashi is everything you want in a shonen anime it's got good characters good battles good character relationships and good antagonists as well in each arc as you go along the series you see the intensity rise but not to the point where it gets far-fetched and because it maintains that level of realism so you don't have to suspend your sense of disbelief you can find yourself slipping into a point where you'll be coming back even without knowing and and once you get past that beginning portion i firmly believe you will enjoy kakaishi because it's got a unique power system the demons it's not just your normal demon exorcist manga so definitely check out kakaishi and it's consistent man the consistency is so important when it comes to manga because a lot of these like battle shonens there's there's, there tends to be a pattern where like it starts off strong and it it hits a moment where it kind of dip like it dips it's not as good as it once was i feel like akashi maintains like a consistent level of enjoyment like as you're reading it Mm -hmm. i agree i agree but yes that's all for today folks i'd like to thank my my guy shax for coming through any final comments for the people uh anytime man and check out the the act mindset is, is it the ak mindset the act mindset <laughs> ak yeah <laughs> the ak mindset <laughs> check that out man hey and before i go london next toronto the connection is strong yes sir all right deuces people <laughs>